getting some work done before uh, before I take a shower and get my day started. Busy work, which is what this is, is probably my least favorite of, of all the types of work. Y you have to do it, but you don't feel like you accomplish much. Okay, Savannah is going with her friends to do something uh, all day today, so it's just me and you today. I do have things planned today though, which, which is a rarity, but I do have some things planned. Do you see that lake right there? I don't think that's technically supposed to be a lake. I don't remember that ever being here when we, when we lived here. That might be a... Uh, that might be a result of, of the, the flood and or raining that's been, <laughs> been going on. Today is going to be John Hopkins guide to, John's guide to, the Hopkins guide, John Hopkins guide to uh, Brentwood, California and what to do. First up, lunch. Authentic Mexican cuisine. See that building right there? That dentist building right there? Little fun fun fact that's not so fun. I got my wisdom teeth removed there and uh, he <laughs> he did something wrong because it was supposed to take two hours and ended up taking five hours. At one point, I remember him shaking, trying to break one of my teeth and he said, oh, this is tough. I cried after that and uh, wasn't a great experience. Well, that's it. That building right behind me is, uh, that's where I would go 90% of the time when I was done with school. It has great Mexican food from, from what I remember. Also, this intersection right here, I, uh, I got into my first, I got into my first wreck, I think the lady rear-ended me. Right, uh, right there. That burrito was $10, like exactly $10. And they didn't take credit cards, so I had to pay with my $100 bill, which it's, it's fine. It was great though. I didn't eat the whole thing, but if you're ever in California, make sure that you make a point to have like authentic, good Mexican food. It's it's hard to describe how it's it's different than like, than like chain places that you find like in the South, but it's just, it's better. It's so much better. Did you see the size of that burrito? So now I, uh, I figured the next up on the John Hopkins tour of whatever I called it is where uh, where I lived, like the house that I, I grew up in. It's actually not in Brentwood. It's in a town that's next to Brentwood called, called Discovery Bay. So, and it takes about 10 minutes to get there. What is this guy doing? I give the guy props for trying, but I don't think you're gonna fit, bud. There's a slight twist going to uh, going to the house, though. a little 
30 anyway. Alright, do you see where that gate, that gate is up there? You see that? You see where that gate is right there? That's my old, that's where my house is. You see, the gate behind me is not guarded whatsoever. It's just, it works, but there's no guards over here. This is kind of a blind spot. So I think, with any luck, I can hop the fence and uh, and get into, or sneak into, or infiltrate my uh, old my old housing community. And if not, then I just get arrested and end up going to going to jail. I honestly think I'll be able to I think I'll be able to climb it. I used to do it all the time when I didn't have a clicker and uh, I didn't feel like going all the way down there. So as long as I, uh, as long as I haven't lost too much of my speed or youthfulness, I should be fine. Right now I'm shedding some unnecessary weight to make the treacherous climb a little bit easier. Wish me luck. This is gonna be my entry point right here. I just have to get my foot. I figure if I get my foot on that little motor thing, it'll allow me to hop over the fence and I should be in no problem. Hopefully. That person just went through the gate, so I'm just going to simply, uh... well, I feel, uh, I feel kind of bad because that was super anticlimactic, but I literally just. Eh. Well, I'm in. <laughs> it's so weird being back in here. See, last time I was in here, they this was like the edge, the very edge of the subdivision, and. They started new construction, but then they stopped it, but then they started it again. So I'm curious to see if the if there's more like new houses or if it's just kind of like the same thing that it was when I was here like six years ago. So it seems like they did add a bunch of new construction. Like all of these houses weren't here. This was just a dirt field. They added a lot. All of this was just, it was just the road. There were no houses here. This was all just completely unfinished. And honestly, me and my sister would take our BB guns out and shoot birds back here because there was nothing, nothing at all. Residents and guests only. Do I count as a guest? I didn't think I'd actually get to see it. I actually still have the Amazon address and a couple of other addresses still attached to that house that I have to. There's something about going back to like where, places where you grew up and spent like formative, like I spent a couple of years here for high school and those are, those are formative years. There's something about it that's just, I don't know if it's just because I'm a nostalgic person or it's just, there's just something about it. All the memories like of like growing up here like start to flood back into your brain 
And uh, as I progress through my life, I'm starting to really cherish and learn how to cherish uh, just memories and, and really put in a priority on memories and experiences because uh, even like all these years later, like I've been gone out of this subdivision for like six or seven years. And even after all that time, I have all these good memories of of me and my sister and just my family and my friends and just all these great memories of this place and, and growing up here. It's great and it's cool that the, the place hasn't changed a bit. All right, I should probably go check on my car. Hopefully I haven't been towed or... Well, that's it. Alright, so I've been sitting here editing for a few hours. I actually met with a friend and I I didn't get a picture with him. John, great seeing you. The friend's name is John. Now I'm gonna pack up and I gotta get out of here. And my battery's almost dead because I didn't bring my chargers. I gotta get out of here. I just spent, I spent like four hours in there. My back is hurting a little bit because it was this really crappy chair. It's a good Starbucks though. Kind of crammed for seating, but it's a good Starbucks. So in life, sometimes you have a decision to make. And for me, I, uh, I want to check out more of the town, but I need to find something to eat. But I have this cold burrito from lunch, like the leftovers from lunch. So what I could do is I could eat this cold burrito now in the car like some kind of caveman and give myself more time to see to see the town. And I'm okay paying that price. Oh. That's my old high school. All right, it's much, much colder than I anticipated. So this whole segment is gonna be a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. All right, so I wanted to do another uh, question and answers because I haven't done one in a while. This one's just gonna be very quick because it's freaking freezing and I'm sitting on a concrete block and that's not helping. This is probably the best kick and snare I've ever heard. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Honestly, for me, I, I'm not doing a ton to the, the processing. I'm mostly, it's mostly just tuning. To give a quick little rundown, even though you didn't ask for it, the, the kick drum on the batter head or the head that the bass drum hits, it's finger tight and then I do half a turn with the drum key on all the lugs. And on the rezzo head, or the one with the hole in it, just finger tight, that's it. I want that as loose as I possibly can so that I can get as much air to the diaphragm as I, as I can get. For the snare, I like to have it a medium, low-ish tuning. Uh, just, just enough to where it gives me like a nice like thung kind of sound, if that makes sense. And that's, that's pretty much it. Add some reverb and you're, you're good. What kit is this? So the kit in 90% of my videos is going to be a Gretsch Renown kit. I love it. It's great. Super reliable. Super stable. The drum sizes, I'll start with the kick and move my way up. Kick drum is a 22 inch. I don't know the depth. I think it's like 22 by 20 maybe? Uh, floor tom is going to be 16 by 16 and the rack tom is going to be 12 by... <laughs> I don't know the depth. And the snare drum is six and a half by 14. When I get home to my studio in Nashville, I'll actually get the exact dimensions. I'm just, I'm not home because I'm traveling and I'll do better. Do you use a tune bot? No, I just do it by ear, but I do want to try tune a tune bot, so. I want to, but right now, no. Purely by ear. All right, I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna talk about this because this is like the third comment I've seen in like the past week uh, regarding this, this one thing. 
Dude, in the front of room, the beater will hit nine, at 90 degrees. So I, I realized that my beater doesn't hit right at 90 degrees and I realized like raising the kick drum up a little bit would make it a lot better um, both playing the drum and how it sounds. I just, I have four drum kits and with that I have four kick drums and all of them require something a little bit different and I honestly just don't want to take the time to like make sure every little thing is correct on them. As long as the bass drum stays in the same spot and sounds good recorded, that's all I care about, and that kind of goes with all my drums. I, I know that's a really bad answer, and that's technically not what I should say, but I'm just, I'm being honest. But I do know, I need to, I know. Thank you for your comment, and uh, it, it, it's appreciated. What kick pedal? The kick pedal is going to be an Iron Cobra. I don't, if I can find the exact model, I'll put it down below with the Zorro uh, beater, square cube beater thing. Again, if I can find that, I'll link it down below. I've had that thing for years. All right, I'm gonna end on this one because it's something that I, I believe in. Finally, someone playing beats on the drums and not just Phil Salad. So for me, all of my, all the drum videos that I show you and that I post on the internet, my first and foremost, like the, the thing that's first and foremost is, is the groove as a whole, like does it sound good and does it have a good feel? I don't think I'm alone in saying that I've seen like a million people chopping out on the internet playing super fast and crazy fills, which is cool and impressive, but for me, I've always been more concerned and wanting to like inspire other people to play like cool grooves that sound good and that can actually be played in songs and music versus just kind of adding to the choppiness. And it's not that I can't do the chops, I just, I choose not to because to me, I think having good feel is way cooler and honestly way more difficult and is something that as a drumming community, we need to kind of celebrate a little bit more. <laughs> I do like that way. I like that you called it Phil Salad. That's, that's pretty funny. Okay, that's uh, probably the world's fastest little Q&A. Like always, thank you for your comments, concerns, and everything else. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find some heat because it is it had to drop like 20 not 20 degrees like 10 degrees while I was in that Starbucks. So if I'm being completely honest, there was one question that I was hoping somebody would ask me, but they they didn't, and I'm just gonna pretend like I got asked and I'm gonna answer it right now. Hey John, what is one piece of gear that you could never ever live without or never could part with? And this being more of a nostalgic kind of episode. I I would have to say my 60s Ludwig drum set. It's the in the black oyster finish. It just I actually got the drum set from this high school. The band teacher was throwing a bunch of stuff out and asked if I'd be interested in taking it, and I did. And I've literally had it since that point. The thing has made the cross-country trek with me. I put it in the back of my Corolla, went from California to Virginia with it, and it's literally been in every single house that I've I've lived in. Um, since since getting it like I it's made the move from Virginia to Tennessee It's 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 gone everywhere with me and because of that It's what my like professional career started on like I practiced on that kit for elevation. I Started recording drums professionally with that kit. It's it's kind of been the thing that's helped me start my career And aside from it sounding great and everything else I just I don't think I could part with it purely because it's kind of been with me through through everything and honestly I would feel that way even if it wasn't a vintage kit and a, a cool vintage kit at that I am s definitely sentimental enough to uh, to keep it purely because it's it's kind of my first drum set ever really 